Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be upgrading the dash cluster on my 2022 Chevy Silverado LTD. I've got everything I need for this upgrade. Thanks to WAMS for sending me this high country cluster program for my truck. I will post a link to their website in the video description. They have two different clusters you can upgrade to. This is the high country cluster, which has the big LCD or LED display in the middle that has all the gauges and screens and whatnot. And they custom program these for your VIN. So, so this is a custom which has the very basic of dashes. As you can see, we've got the basic dash here with no controls on this side of the steering wheel. And you just control it, this little screen here with this little twist knob. And um, it's very basic. It shows things like miles per hour. Um, it's got a couple trip meters, trans temp, things like that. And then the rest of the gauges are analog gauges. So by upgrading, I'll be swapping out the dash cluster. I'm also going to be swapping out the steering wheel. I have a new wheel. And then there's also a little harness that I got from Harness Doctor that you will need to install to get the radio controls on the new wheel to communicate with the new cluster, the new dash cluster. Here's my new wheel. It is a leather wrapped wheel and it's got the cruise control buttons here. This is a heated wheel, so um, I guess I'll have to figure out if I can add heat function to work. I don't think it's gonna work right off the bat here. Um, there may be something else that needs to be added inside the truck to make it work, but it does have the controls on the side here. This is gonna control that driver info center on the new dash cluster. And then it also has these buttons for phone and speak. Um, I'm pretty sure these are supposed to work and um, we'll, we'll find out when we get it all hooked up. And then it also has the buttons on the back for volume control and seek um, for the radio. And those should work as well. Oh, and lastly, I've got the harness from Harness Doctor. It is a single wire. And this is gonna give us the ability to control the DIC from our new steering wheel because the current harness in the truck is missing the one wire. Let's dig into the install here a little bit and figure out exactly what we gotta do. Before you start messing with anything electronic, I advise you to disconnect the negative battery terminal on your truck. It's very easy, it's a 10 millimeter bolt, and then you can just shove it down here on the side so it's out of the way. You can see I'm disconnected. Also important, since we're gonna be removing the steering wheel, including the airbag, it's good to let the vehicle sit with the negative battery terminal removed for 45 minutes to an hour. This gives time for all the capacitors and all the systems inside the vehicle to discharge so that you don't have an accidental uh, deployment of the airbag. So I've done that. It's been sitting here for over an hour now and I'm going to start removing the steering wheel. First off, I did remove a panel here on the side because we are going to have to remove this panel here to get at some of the stuff for the dash cluster, but we're going to concentrate on the steering wheel first. On the back side of these steering wheels, there's a little panel you can see right here and you can just take a little flathead screwdriver and those panels come right off. Just like that. And on both sides, there are a little bolt. All right, so I just confirmed these are 10 millimeter bolts. So you're just gonna take those bolts out. So here's the one on the other side. I'm just gonna use my little flathead screwdriver to pop off this panel, which reveals that 10 millimeter bolt right there. And now with those two 10 millimeter bolts removed, the airbag literally just comes right out. So on the back side of the airbag here, there's all these connectors and there's this pink and purple connector that have these orange spring-loaded uh, locking tabs that you need to lift up at the same time on both sides of each connector to remove it. So you need two flathead screwdrivers to do that. There's my pink. There's the purple. And there's one more connector right here that has a red locking tab. After you pop out that red locking tab, you have to depress a part right here and that will release the connector. But I got it just like that removed. All right, so next we can remove this yellow connector. There's just a locking tab on the underside that we need to pop up and then we can depress the tab and pull that out. So I'm gonna do that one now. Locking tab, pull the connector out just like that. 
The bolt for the steering wheel is a T50 torqued bolt, and it is quite difficult to remove. I used a long breaker bar for the majority of the time to remove it, and then used a regular ratchet socket to take it out the rest of the way, but it is very, very tight. So now that we got that um, bolt out, we can pop the steering wheel off. All right guys, I got it off. It just took a little persuasion. Just kind of have to yank it back a couple times with a good amount of force and it came loose. So now we can start removing some of this stuff here on the dash. As I've mentioned before, I've got this side panel removed over here already. And that is gonna give us access to a couple of Torx bolts to loosen this side panel here, but first, the first one we're going to remove is this t top piece, which just comes off because it's held on with clips. Simple as that. Next, I think I'm going to remove this area here because we have to remove this trim piece, which goes behind here. It also goes behind over here. So we're going to have to remove some stuff on this side as well to loosen that. But um, first, I'm going to start with this piece over here. On this side, there is a Torx bolt here and a Torx bolt here, and they are T15s, and you can remove this and this, and that'll allow you to pop off this panel. After you remove those two Torx bolts, you can use a trim removal tool to work your way around this panel and just pop it out, but don't go yanking on it because there's connectors on the back side here, so you need to just loosely pop it out first, and then you can disconnect the connectors on the back side. You can see there's connectors back there that you need to remove. All right, now that I've got this side removed, which is real easy, just the two connectors, I'm gonna start working on loosening some of this stuff over here with the radio. Um, because like I said, this part of the dash goes back behind this trim piece here. We need to sort of bring the radio forward a little bit. Again, with your trim removal tool, you need to pop out this piece of trim here that goes around the radio. And now that piece is removed. And now there are four Torx bolts holding this radio in all around. So I'm gonna remove those so we can pull the radio back 11. These are also T15s. So now that we have those four Torx bolts removed, you can just pop the radio forward just a hair. So there's an area here you can grab onto and just sort of pull that forward a little bit, just like that. And I'm just gonna leave that there for now. The next thing I'm gonna do is remove this seven millimeter, this seven millimeter, and this seven millimeter. And that should give me uh, the ability to remove this cluster trim piece that's in front of the dash cluster. These are super loose as well. Next one here in the middle, and then one more here on the left, little seven millimeter bolts. All right, so now that we have those three bolts removed, we can start to pull this trim piece off. But like I said, it goes back behind here a little bit. So we can take our trim tool and pry this piece back a little bit, which is also just held on with clips. And that gives us a little extra room because now we can Get this out back behind here. You can see both sides. It just sort of comes out just like that. And there is a rubber piece that here that is connected here. I'm gonna have to um, pop off this top cover as well so that we can get to something else that's behind there. I believe this is just held on with clips. This comes out all as one piece because it's connected by this 
rubber piece in the middle. Now we have access to the entire cluster. There are four bolts holding the cluster on. Here, here, down there, and down there. So we can remove those and then we can remove the cluster from the vehicle. So we got all four of those bolts removed and the cluster is just hanging here kind of loose and it comes right out with one hand. And there's a single connector on the back that we need to remove. So there's the connector and there is a locking tab on the connector. So we're gonna need our handy flathead screwdriver again to pry the locking tab open. Then I believe this uses a, a lever type design where you pull this lever back and it pops the connector loose. All right, so this next part is not for the faint of heart. So you've gotten this far. Next we need to install the harness from the Harness Doctor, which is literally just a single wire. And this is gonna get installed onto an existing harness, this one here, which came into the back of the cluster, and then this one here, which comes into the back of the clock spring that controls the steering wheel. So you have to take this connector apart. It's a little tricky, but it can be done. First off, there is a zip tie on this side of the connector. You're gonna to need to snip that off. Then you can push this gray part of the connector by inserting like your screwdriver here and the black part of the connector is gonna come out and the gray part is gonna slide off. So I pop the connector loose by sticking my flathead screwdriver into this circle and it pops this black part off through the back of this connector. This is just the housing and that reveals just the wires and the actual pins for this connector. So now we're gonna install a wire into one of these pins on the back. So it's gonna be difficult to see on here, but on this connector, there is a number up in this corner. It says 17. That means this pin right here is pin 17. We want to insert the wire into pin 20, which would be three pins to the right of pin 17 because down here this says pin 32. So the way these are numbered is 17 through 32. So 20 would be, this is 17, 18, 19, 20 right next to this uh, black and white wire. And that's where we're gonna install our wire into pin 20. And on the harness doctor harness, they label which side of the harness goes where. This one says it's the cluster for pin 20. And it already has the terminal installed on it, as you can see. And we are just going to put that down into pin 20 on here until it locks into place. So I got the wire installed into pin 20. You can see that big green wire here coming down and it's locked into place. Now it can only go in one way. You want the locking tab on that silver terminal to face out um, like all the other ones that are in there. Now I can put this connector back together. I'm gonna route this wire down behind the dash here and bring it up right to here, which is, we're gonna do a similar install with the other end of that wire on this connector. So now I've got this connector here on the back of the clock spring with a locking tab. Just like that, we gotta open it up. Then we can depress this tab here to pull it out of its spot. So on this connector, we're gonna be landing a wire into the number nine slot, which on this connector is all the way on this top row, all the way on the end. It's harder to see the numbers on this one, but this is number nine, and the one on the bottom is uh, 21. But the one we want is all the way over here on the right. And first we need to pry up this black locking tab thingy. Once you raise this locking tab, 
that allows you to insert the wire and you can close the locking tab and it holds it in place. So I used a little flathead screwdriver to just pry up that locking tab and that's what it looks like. It doesn't pry up very much but just enough and now we can land that wire into the number nine slot. So I got the wire pushed in, it's held in place. Now we're going to snap back this locking tab just like that and we can reinstall it into the back of the clock spring and you can maybe tidy up your wires with some zip ties or something here, this one wire and make it look nice. All right, I've got all my wires hooked up, reconnected. I zip tied them down so that they're kind of held in place nicely. And now I've got my new cluster ready to go in. Set it into place up here and then plug in the connector on the back and then I can start buttoning up all my other dash pieces here. So here's that connector going in and you push it in as far as it can go and then the lever is going to take it the rest of the way and then you need to re-snap that locking tab like that. And then this can go back into place and we can mount it with those four bolts. So we got all four bolts back in. Just hand tight, they just need to be snug. Next, I'm gonna put the top shroud here that goes over the front of the dash, covers up the top of the steering wheel. That goes in back behind here a little bit, and um, then we can work on all these other pieces. So you just wanna be really careful when you're putting this piece of trim back in that you don't actually mar the finish on the brand new dash cluster that you put in. So just be careful when you're putting these pieces back in. So I got that piece in nice. There are three bolts up top here that are seven millimeters that hold the top of this trim against the back of the dash. So we're gonna do those now. So we've got those three seven millimeters back in. And now we can push this radio back in. Um, we've got the bezel on the side here that overlaps with this piece of trim. Push that in. Make sure we're all smooth and tight. And then we can push the radio back in. And there's those four T15 bolts that go around the radio. Don't forget those. Then we've got this trim piece that goes around the radio that's all snaps. This piece that goes on top of the gauge cluster all snaps again. Drop it in place. And it goes in, piece of cake. The last section we got to do is reinstall this uh, control module over here and then reinstall our new steering wheel. All right, I got that trim piece all put back together, including the one on the side, easy stuff. The last thing we need to do is install our new wheel. On this stock, there is a little, I don't know what you want to call it, a little hash mark there. You need to line that up with the hash mark on your steering wheel so that it gets on at the right orientation because there will only be one way for this to install you can see it's hard to tell but I've got the splines lined up and I've got the wheel pushed back in as far as it can go I'm gonna go ahead and put this connector in because it wants to go in make sure I get the locking tab there and now we need to put our big T50 bolt back into place there. So I've got the bolt just kind of started by hand here. I'm gonna start tightening it up with my regular ratchet. I'm gonna tighten it up as much as I can by hand there. I think this mark was straight up and down when I started, so I'm gonna tighten it up another 
a little bit there so that it is straightened up and down as well. So we got that tightened up. I've got my airbag and I'm gonna do all the connectors on the back side of the airbag. That's how that one should look, that locking tab is depressed. Then we've got our two connectors, pink and purple, and they get attached to their corresponding spots. So purple goes into purple, pink to pink, just like that. Then you can gently seat the steering wheel back into place, and then we can put our two 10 millimeter bolts in from either side. Last thing there is, is to put these little covers over those two spots where the bolts go to hold the airbag in. So that's what those are gonna look like after you're all through on both sides. And the dash is installed, and truly the last thing to do is reconnect the negative battery terminal, which is right here. And then tighten up that 10 millimeter. Now let's turn on the truck and check out the dash. All right, so everything's buttoned up. You got my new wheel installed. Looks great, feels great. I love the leather wrapped. And we're gonna start it up for the first time. All right guys, so I am using the controls on the steering wheel. Looks like they work. I'm using the button on the back to raise the volume, and it works. Let's see if the seek button works. Yep, on the other side to change channels. That's awesome. I'm really excited. This is uh, pretty cool. Now, there's all these menus here. I'm gonna have to play with them for a while to get used to them because they're different than what they were before. Um, so this is the brake pad screen. This is fuel economy. This is a timer menu. This is a coolant temperature menu. Oil temperature. This is a performance menu. Home screen that shows miles per hour. Okay, so now we're back over to the info. Oil pressure, oil temperature, engine boost. This is a zero to 60, <laughs> cool, zero to 60 timer. Uh, a G-force, uh, and then this is how you, you adjust fuel range, I want that one turned on. These are just the screens. Top consumers, I don't know what that is. Economy trend, I don't know. We're gonna check all these out and just see. There's a lap timer now, engine hours, trans fluid, off-road, a blank page. So here's our first trip, second trip, fuel range, oil life, Tire pressure, probably take a minute for the sensors to recalibrate to the truck. That's air filter, brake pad, fuel economy, which this one you can switch to distances over 25 and 50 and 400 miles. Timer again, coolant temp, top consumers, air conditioning consumes the most right now. Okay, so it's telling you what consumes the most gas. Okay, uh, here's an economy trend screen oil temp, oil pressure screen, this is that performance screen again, engine boost screen, a separate one, performance timer, lap timer, g-force, engine hours. Engine hours resets unless you get the dealership to print off something. They, they specify it on the WAMS website. Um, I didn't really care about engine hours transferring over, but the mileage does transfer over because it's stored um, on the truck's ECU instead of actually in the dash. So if you're really wanting engine hours to reset, you need to get something from the dealership that prints off that you send to WAMS and they program it into your cluster. Transfluid, here's an off-road screen. Oh, it even tells you steering angle. See that I'm turning the wheel a little bit and it's telling me I'm 13, 25% degrees. That's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, and then these are all the different options. Speed warning you can turn on. So basically, it's just, you know, like I said, updated to the high country cluster, which has all digital cluster gauges 
Um, for top left, that is the oil pressure. The next one over is the engine temperature. Next one over is gas. And then the one to the right is your voltometer for your battery. Big upgrade. Very, very pleased that everything's working, apparently. Um, plus, I like the leather-wrapped wheel. And having the controls on the back to control the radio is a huge thing. Um, especially because this has Apple CarPlay, and when I'm on a phone call, I have to reach over and click end. Instead of now, I think I can just hit end right here on this button. Oh, and it even mutes it for me too. Look, volume muted. Nice. And I think it'll connect to Siri with my, if my phone was connected using this button here. So that's pretty cool. Overall, I'm very pleased. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to start driving the truck like this. I spend a lot of time in this truck driving. Uh, so like, I know it's a work truck, but having the leather wrapped wheel just for driving, the comfort is so much better. And having some more gauges and things like that is a, is a big plus. Like I said, the heat is probably not gonna work. It doesn't, yeah. It probably needs an updated clock spring with another power source. So that's gonna have to be another day. Anyways, yeah, so I guess if you wanna do this for your custom truck, get a hold of WAMS and find a steering wheel that you can swap over and also get the harness from Harness Doctor and then uh, you'll be in business. I'm gonna be geeking out over this the rest of the day probably, just playing with it. So anyways, if you like this video, as always, give it a thumbs up. I'd love it if you subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. We'll see you next time. Later.